micro in here. So now we have the motherboard clean and ready for testing. We have a brand new power supply. Um, actually, don't know if this works. It's never been started by me. And then we have the monitor retro stop, and we have the appropriate video cable with the audio capability which on one end has the Amiga video connector and on the other hand it has this classical SCART which you don't see so often now that and this here this retro monitor which is very heavy actually has hidden behind here a SCART connector have the order wrong because I didn't look up what was right and left and that I think because I haven't put the um, screws back and this dropped off but we'll put that to the side so it doesn't create any short circuits or problems and then we have the Amiga power supply connector which we will then plug in here and the power supply has a on off on it and then we need to put the monitor on so and then i don't know if this works and i don't know if the auto switching works so we'll see what will happen so, so we have basically this should work because it's new no idea if this will start and no idea if this will switch to scart automatic so let's give it a try First try. Okay, looking blank. So I think the video switch happened. No, no warnings, nothing. Actually, to tell you the truth, I don't know what happens when you start the Amiga motherboard like this, like completely blank. So there's no accessories, no keyboard, no, no, <laughs> no disk drive. So let's give it one more power cycle, just see if it does it does the same. some researching in the background and if it um, turns silver or white then most of the chip should be working so um, the next thing I'm going to do now is to actually connect in the floppy disk drive and, and see if it recognizes it. So um, power is off and then we have the disk drive and then that should sit there connector goes on there like that and then this power connector should go in there like that and now I'm just going to so I just put a bit of insulating foam underneath the, the disk drive just now yeah, just in case I bump it and it ends up short, short circuiting something but anyway now I have the data cable and the power and the disk drive and, and let's see what happens now then. the sound from there. That should be the correct display. Okay. I would 
expect it to um, be displaying the classical Amiga disk image. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be pulling, um, pulling the drive. We can, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but it's going tick, tick. I think I'm just going to get a kickstart disk in and um, see if it reacts to that. So, yeah, a little correction to terminology. This is the kickstart. It's actually the we have a workbench disk, so I don't know. Let's see if something happens. Okay, so uh, do I still have the wrong input channel on the display? Because that is working perfectly. Strange. Well, let's see if something comes up here. <laughs> that sounds perfect. It's definitely loading the workbench. So we should have some kind of a picture here. Or well, let's see if it pops up when the workbench loads. That is so strange. Okay, I'm gonna have to investigate why do we not have a but anyway it's definitely working I mean the the rest of the circuitry at least uh, something to do with the um, with the HDMI connection no oh, HDMI SCART connection <laughs> something very fishy So, anyway, to continue the diagnostic, so basically I think we have a working machine. I mean, it um, loads the workbench disk. It's obviously asking for it, so it go, the disk drive goes click, 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 so it's trying to sense that the disk is there, and then when you put, the disk, you put in, the, in the workbench disk, then it loads it, so I think the operating system and everything is working. So, um, so there's some problem with the um, RGB to SCART connection. The monitor should, I've not tested it myself, but when I purchased this, used this, the, the one of the advertising points was this was Amiga compatible, so it had been run on an Amiga before. So um, it should be able to handle the RGB SCART signal. But there is one thing that one can do, and that is to use um, this output here, which is the uh, monochrome video out and you need this kind of a RCA connector so that's the basically in the uh, yeah in the so bygone days you used to have these types of cables that were you had composite video and then you had the audio two channels right left so I'm just going to connect in the in the um, composite video and then there's a composite video input This machine, so that's that one. Okay. Ah. I wonder what color coding I should respect. Actually, if you look at the back of uh, this monitor, then it's um, it's red and white for audio, and then um, yellow for video. So let's do that. Excuse me. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't matter. They're all physically the same. If one wants to follow the color code, so then it would be like that. Um. Oh wait, that's not on. Where did I put the remote? That. Oh, okay. At least to access the power. Come on. Oh, that's strange. Always oh, we're moving around and one forgets things. Oh, I have to get the remote. Oh, there we go. We have the remote. And then we put the power on. On the arm you go. And then we can hear 
start clicking. I don't know if you can hear on the video, but it goes like click, click. And then we try and um, switch the input. So that's the dead um, scored. So we, uh, Oh, look at that. So this is um, the monochrome video output is working and according to what I have read online, um, then you're in pretty good shape. So that, then it's more to do with the, uh, could possibly do to the capabilities of the TV you're trying to connect to or you have an issue in the, um, the actual SCART cable. So I think we are gonna have a, we're gonna open this and we're gonna have a look, see what's inside. And, um, yeah, see what we can see. Well, that's that was what I was expecting to see when we started initially testing with the stock card cable. That that was the video, up, except that, that in color, not in monochrome video. So okay, let me uh, shut down and then we um, go and investigate that. So, I have the SCART connector. Doesn't really look like in bad shape. And then you kind of unscrew this, if I remember correctly. Like that, and then you can... Some of these have screws. Oh, there we go. Oh my god. That's been twirled a bit. I mean having the cable so bunched up is a bit of a mystery, but none of them are disconnected. So I'm gonna have to look at the schematics for this one and see um, are all the expected pins populated and everything that's soldered seems to be well connected so So, well, a little bit solved mystery. So if one looks at it from this angle here, then there should be a pin 16, which is RGB mode indicator, and that's the third one, one, two, three. So if we turn it sideways, then we see that RGB mode is not connected. So there's no cable for that. And then the other one, which is a little bit more minor thing, is pin 8 in this court. So that will be one, two, three, 4. That's 4 from the top. 1, 2, 3, 4. That one there. And then we turn it over and you see it's not connected either. And that is to enable audio by default to come through the SCART connector. And I think what's happening is that if you look here, and turn it like this, there's composite video in, which is just one pin there. That is connected. So what's happening now, I think, is that the um, the TV is thinking that you're trying. We're trying to send a signal here, and maybe there's even a weak video signal on this one here, the default blank page, since the, the actual default mode in Amiga is the RGB. That's my theory, at least. So then you get a sort of white picture um, based on that, because there's this video signal that gives that through here, but it can't switch to RGB because the RGB mode is not um, not enabled and uh, basically the diagrams I've been seeing online is that you um, you you 
put two extra wires from here and that would mean that you would connect in 60 I'll be 23 on here should be connected and then let's check the audio one that would be 22 so anyway, I use the multimeter to check and the wires are okay so it's none of them are broken so I think I'll actually just modify this existing cable so I just selected a like a yeah this is like a headphone extension cable I have lots of these from different devices uh, they should have enough conductors because it's for um, stereo so I'm just gonna cut it use this in parallel with the existing cable oh start the air conditioning it's a bit hot here but anyway this cable that I showed it actually has suitably two free conductors I'm going to use those and then we have to solder it on to pins 22 and 23 and then needs to be a resistor and that I'm going to embed on this side of the on this connector so you need a I'm going to actually post the link to the diagram that I'm using in the comments. So now it's time just to connect in the other end. Again a bit difficult to see but I need to get a wire on the third pin there. Six which is sixteen and then and then seven from here. One, two, three, four, five. Ah seven, so that needs to be just there on that one. So I connected in the cable and now put it on. And we just have to put the power on and see what happens. Well, well, look at that. In color. <laughs> now then, um. Just to double check, really paranoid double check, we just want to switch the inputs just to see that it's, so it's video, so that it actually can cycle through everything, DI, TV, so that will be the next one, will be Scarlet RGB fixed. So that's the that was the cable's fault that we didn't get a full color picture. And then we can um, load the workbench. So there we get the workbench. And then mom um, has a few accessories. Tested. And the first accessory is the mouse. And let's see. I'll just see it doesn't matter which port we put it into. Yeah, we have a mouse cursor. If I can just find a bit of place to move it. <laughs> going to try and click. Uh, if you haven't been <coughs> following all my videos then I actually um, I introduced this and fixed the button so I think I fixed the button so let's see if the oh, oh. really isn't enough space oh, here. Oh, no. oh, this power supply is taking up too much space it's the lead that's dragging it. Anyway, let's try and click on... Oh, that's the ramp. Yeah, so... And then right click. I'm not sure if they actually have right click functions. Wow, it's been a year. Like, 
30 years since I <coughs> actually played with the um, workbench on Lamigas. This is kind of cool. Let's see if that does. Either the right click button is not working or there aren't so many right click functions. Let's see if we take. about the right click. As I said, I'm not sure where where we have right click function. So moving on with the testing, so now we know that the buttons work. And I actually think the clarification is that uh, by default there's no right click functionality in um, in the default setup of the workbench. So if you installed some utilities, then you could get right-click menus. But anyway, um, I also going to run the quite a known utility, which is called the um, Omega Test Kit. Let me just take out the workbench disk. And um, my main focus is going to be to to really, because uh, there should be a mouse, uh, an option to test the mouse. Also. We'll see. Oh no, it's hard to see. Also have a few other utilities. Let's just focus on test kit. And then this has different um, yeah, options to test different things. But now we're focusing on the mouse, so we want to. Okay, what's that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, it must be that one there. Ooh, whoop! Aha, that's interesting. Four, one. Change them all. Does it say that doesn't look like a mouse? No, that's a controller. Um, okay. Uh, so let's put this one in mouse. <laughs> that's the only thing. Okay. And then we. Okay, then the middle, there's a middle mouse if you have three, three key mouse, and then the movement, like that. Okay, and then we take that and let's put it in here and see what happens now. Okay, movement is detected, left is detected, right is detected. So, okay, so, um, no, it's also... One thing that I didn't investigate before, the, the, these ports are actually configured for, or can be configured for, wasn't it? Three different devices, or three types of devices. Keyboard connected, yes. <laughs> so am I stuck in there then? Well, it's made a bit strange. I didn't think this got this this side didn't get stuck, but this side seems to get stuck in in this region. Oh, that's a pity. Oh, well, anyway, well, but we I think we saw three three, at least three devices, the different categories of devices. So there was something that was called, ah, uh, the analog is the probably, you can convert it to a serial port. 
and then it's probably a joystick and then a controller thing and then the mouse so something like that I'll have to look into that later but anyway I'm practically speaking though what this test shows is that from a mouse perspective they are um, the ports are working and I don't know if I can do it. Or is it that this... Ah, no, that's the thing. So it's only this port that works as the main mouse. So the operating system mouse. I don't know, okay, what if you configure that one as a mouse? No. Okay, now, now I understand. So that's um, mouse, joystick, some kind of a... Okay, that's the CD32, um, the gaming console version of, of the Commodore made. Commodore made a gaming console version of the Amiga. Uh, actually very hard to come by. Uh, there's sometimes you, on the usual sites, you get the, <laughs> the motherboards for those units popping up, but not the actual full unit. And then it's analog. I'm not really sure what this is about. I'm assuming this would be some kind of a touch board thing. Okay, so that's good. So that kind of wraps up that, and then we have the keyboard to test. Now, offline or off video, I'm going to actually now package up the RGB um, SCART cable, put the um, and some put some yeah tape or something to hold the cable in better in place. Oh, be back when that's done. So anyway, now I put the keyboard in and of course it would be nice to hear some sound also. But uh, let's check the keyboard out first. So, power on. Light. Workbench. Oh, at least those come on. To the test kit. And, um, see if that has any anything to help test the keyboard. Okay, so I'm just going to have to press through the keys and find out which ones don't work. So here's the result. Um, for some odd reason, these Amiga keys are not reacting, and then the cursor keys, these ones here. This was actually explained in the, when they were saying about that there's a problem with the. So yeah, I'm going to have to investigate what could be causing these specific keys to fail. So, some bad news, but maybe not totally unexpected. So, um, I tried to diagnose the, the group of keys that is like up, down and, and sideways. So that's this group here. And this trace right here, there's no conductivity between there and there and then I tried to according to some videos I followed online that one can scratch open the insulation and then get to the copper layer and I tried to do it here and basically the trace <laughs> disintegrated into some kind of powder even though I was very careful and then I did the same scraping here and here I got a copper a copper to emerge and then I got conductivity between there and there so there are people online that have fixed these conductivity problems.
called trace conductivity problems with um, copper tape and then um, a pen that um, uh, is like a conductive pen so you can like draw traces on material conductive traces on material uh, so, but I did. I actually didn't look at the Amiga buttons, like what what trace problem I could have. But <coughs> a bit of a. I don't know. It's it's really we need a magnifying camera here to show. see a discoloration of the is it easier to see from this I don't think I could actually put it in film this no, I think the cameras I have <laughs> not good enough to really show it but the thing is that there's um, a certain level of discolorization of the of some of these traces so they look darker than the um, the other traces and, um, and then one really tries to look at close to them they look a bit um, shabby even if they're like they're laminated between the plastic of this memory. So yeah, so <coughs> option options would be to um, try and buy some or buy some um, copper tape and then the conductive pen and then try and actually redraw the connection for these buttons. Uh, some people have had success, others not so much success. So it, uh, and then of course there's absolutely no promise like what the general condition of these like how worn out all these individual pads like, like when I was testing the keyboard I felt it wasn't really taking every key press as nicely as it should <laughs> so anyway I think I might consider buying a new a new membrane I mean uh, uh, yeah it depends on how you think of costs but I mean it's not a very inexpensive piece of material uh, but you're gonna get them new or reproduction um, I intend to keep the Amiga that I'm working on so I'm not repair repairing it for resale or anything so as an investment for myself it would be probably I don't know I've been balancing it for a while but I think it might be actually worth it take into account that many of these traces look it's actually most obvious in 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 this, um, yeah, the this group here and the, the trace that leaves there and, and goes out, so it um, is clearly clearly miscolored. And then when I scraped it, it was just it turned to. Is uh, there's no copper here? The one, so it means that I would think that there's been some humidity or something that's come down here, and then it's kind of forced itself into the trace for about one centimeter or something. So that means that there's been corrosion created. These are very thin, these um, these traces. So anyway, I'm going to actually invest in a new a new membrane. I'll see if that um, fixes, the, well, it should fix the problem <laughs> for the cost involved. Uh, and then of course it will be interesting to see if the um, key presses are more um, positive. So it could be that that will help for those for that part also. So anyway, finally got the new membrane. So this is what it looks like on the business end, and then there's the back end of it. So I'm going to um, 
install this in place and then we'll run the test again and see how it goes. Well, let's hope everything works. So now we've got the um, membrane in place set up. I booted it and put it into the test program. Now we'll see if we're going to be very disappointed. And again, like two presses per key. Oops, not good. That's definitely a problem. Cheat a bit on that one. Though. Now there is a possibility that there are feet, the the actual part that's under the button that is bad, or less than optimal. So even if one has a new, oops, that's not so. Oh, came back. Of course, this pressing it on this is not to actually screwed into <laughs> into anything. So. the if oh that came back uh, okay I didn't even press it very hard as I said there could be an issue with the feet but I'm actually happy now we have I didn't miss anything no so now we have at least it's responding to every every key press so now I'm just going to do a little bit of testing in, in notepad utilities and and other things just to see that it, as I said this 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 is not um, very stable on this table the um, yeah, I don't know if you can see but it kind of rocks on this platform so when it's screwed into the into the actual um, chassis of the computer then it's much more it's firmly it's sitting on a firm base so then, then when you hit it then the actual force goes into the keyboard probably. but anyway um, Yep, give it some more testing in the notepad application and see, see how it feels. So, now it's time to um, check the audio, so I have it going um, to um, the monitor on the SCART connector, and then it has this like forced audio input through SCART um, status line. Is Activated and this is the ah, right and left. I don't know if I have them in the right order. Let's see if we get any audio. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's this. So this says which channels are on, and then ugh, this is what. And then this is slow pass filter. Now yeah, you can hear that. I can't explain what that glitch with the um, picture was. That was that was just strange, and I wa I wasn't able to reproduce it. Either. So now it seems to be stable. Whatever it is. So 
So let's put them individually on so that works. 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 Oh, so I, th I think they actually have a, yeah, similarly working audio, as far as I can see. And those are left and right, and four channels. I don't know, but I say it works. So I rebooted it, put it into the notepad application, so... jumps around too much. I think it's because partially because of this is so unstable that one doesn't get wait to start most first where's the end button? Somewhere. Is it like alt end? No. Oh, it's so hard to see from Okay. Yeah, it, it just jumps too much. I'm trying to hold it. Yeah. This, uh, this space is too spring. This is <laughs> 30 year old tech, so how well does it respond to key presses? There's, there's also one thing that is uh, not good is that these, the keyboard wiring is exposed on, to the, on, on top of this electronics. So, you, as you know, we have a sh the shield that goes on top of all this. So, it could be that it's radiating these communication lines with a lot of just like the, from here and everywhere. It's, so that it's not a guarantee that the signal's going going through the keyboard connection or at the way that it's currently set up is that clean. Anyway, I think that's um Yeah. That's testing completed, I would say. I mean if giving it a bit of this and that for being thirty years old so it has to be so, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this video up on this one, and the um, uh, upcoming video will be the um, final assembly. So, um, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon, get notified, and join the fun when I put it back into its original form. I'll see you in the next one.